If you take away the yoke from the midst of thee, uh, take away the from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, the speaking of vanity. And so he's talking about once you start fasting, you begin noticing the sins in your own life. You stop putting demands on other people, and you begin be getting more concerned with yourself. You stop wagging the finger at people, pointing, "Well, look what you did! Look what you did! Look what you did!" No, you begin to see your own sin, and you begin being concerned with trying to please the Lord yourself rather than blaming everybody else. And the speaking of vanity. Listen, fasting will humble you. You just close your mouth when you're fasting. It's not about what you think or what you say. It's like, man, I'm just trying to survive here. And Lord, I, I, I need you. And you're humbled. And you're, you're hungry. And your body's beginning to feel the weakness that comes with not eating. And you begin to sense how much you really do need God. You're not spouting off a bunch of stuff when you're fasting. See how fasting just begins to change you from the inside out? Is there any wonder that such a powerful discipline Satan is trying to obscure from Christianity? Satan doesn't want us to see it. He doesn't want us to experience it. Because it's incredibly, incredibly powerful. And we can read more. You can read the next a few verses there. Let me show you one more. This is incredible. Uh, verse 10. And if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry again... I'm in my fasting, I'm reaching out to others and satisfy the afflicted soul. I'm trying to help people. Then shall thy light rise in obscurity. God says, I will, when you humble yourself, I will lift you up. And thy darkness is the noonday. I'll take the dark areas of your life and bring my brightness. Verse 11, and the Lord shall guide thee continually. You need God's guidance? Fasting is a way to find it. I don't know what to do. I don't know what decisions to make. Fast. And satisfy thy soul in the drought. Maybe you've got everything. Maybe you've got cars and money and all this. And you just feel so dissatisfied. Maybe you've got a wonderful wife and kids and all of these things. And you look around your life and you know you're blessed. But you're still miserable. You ever been there? Well, you start fasting and God brings that back down. And begins to connect the dots. And you begin to see, wow, how incredibly blessed I am. And my soul begins to be satisfied. Even in drought, even in loss. And make fat thy bones, not make fat thy body, amen. Make fat thy bones. That's talking about blessing from the inside out. Now shall be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. Never ending abundance. Hey, that's pretty good, isn't it? So why does fasting work? It humbles the soul. We talked about that. Psalm 35, 13 says, but as for me... When they were sick, my clothes with sackcloth, I humbled my soul with fasting and my prayer returned into my own bosom. You ever start feeling yourself getting lifted up with pride? It's amazing how quickly fasting will teach you. you, bring, you bring, that, bring that pride down. Uh, fasting chastens the soul. Psalm 69, 10 says, when I wept and chastened my soul with fasting. Uh, getting your soul under control, getting your mind and your heart and your emotions under control. Uh, fasting subdues the flesh. The Bible talks about in 1 Corinthians 9 that if you don't subdue the flesh, you're going to be a castaway. Is your flesh starting to get out of control? It just wants what it wants. And the more you feed it, the more it cries out for what it wants. Maybe you're having trouble with addictions. You're having trouble controlling your tongue. You're having uh, trouble not doing things that you know you shouldn't do. Man, you start fasting and it'll bring... If, if, you, can, if you can control your mouth and your tongue and you say, I'm not going to eat. It's amazing how the rest of the body comes in line and you gain control over the desires of the flesh. Fasting weakens the connection to this world and strengthens your connection to God. The, the, the more weak you get, the more hungry you get in some ways and the more you you uh, are unattached to the things of this world it's amazing how your your connection with God gets so much brighter and more vibrant and more lively you feel like he's closer he's been close all the time but now there's not all that a fuzz and, and confusion between us and worldly lust. It's like all that just brings away and like the clouds spreading on a beautiful starry night and you begin to, the clouds begin to spread. Now you can see the glory that was there the whole time. As you see the Lord. Fasting proves our sincerity. God says, I'll answer that request, but I'm not sure how bad you want it. And sometimes we need to Prove our sincerity 
Bible says the importunity of prayer and praying and praying and praying and praying and praying and praying. And prayer increases, prayer and fasting increases our faith because every time I miss a meal, I'm saying I believe God's going to honor his word. I believe God can do things. If I get out of the way, I believe God can do things that he wouldn't normally do. We see examples of power of the power of fasting and prayer in the Bible. Daniel fasted over the sins of his nation. Daniel chapter 9 verses 1 through 19. He fasted for clarity and direction and God gave it to him. We see in chapter, uh, another chapter there, Daniel fasted. Daniel chapter 10 verses 3 through 13. He fasted. Matter of fact, we won't take time to read it. But God was actually moving angels at Daniel's behest. Pretty interesting stuff. The power of prayer and fasting. We see that Ahab, the wicked king, prayed and fasted. And even the Lord responded to wicked Ahab's prayer and fasting in 1 Kings chapter 21, verses 27 through 29. Great people in the Bible fasted and prayed. Moses, David, Elijah, Darius, Daniel, Esther, Ezra, Nehemiah, Anna, Jesus, John Baptist, Cornelius, Paul, the Christian leaders of Antioch in Acts chapter 13 Folks, Christians have always understood the power of this thing called prayer and fasting. Now, it's not something that you do all the time, but it ought to be something that you do when needed. And even the more mature you get, perhaps even regularly. I ask you, when's the last time you fasted for powerful prayer? When's the last time you skipped a meal because you needed something more? Than food. 